Can you hear me now? How, how, how did you like our newest addition to the praise team today? God is so great. Yes. All the time. Amen. Um, we did? Oh, you thought it was Eddie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eddie's hair could not recognize you. There were two new members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went to the barber. He told me I had kind hair. I said, really? He said, the kind you found on the dogs behind. I said, oh. thank you, sir. I will not be coming back. Amen. Galatians, y'all got your Bible? Before you stand up, let me just tell you this. Uh, I had a guy talking to me. He said, uh, my boss called me today. He said, is everything okay at the office? I said, yes, all under control. It's been a very busy day. I haven't stopped for a minute. Can you do me a favor? He asked. He said, of course, anything. What it is, he said, hurry up, take your shot. I'm right behind you in the seventh hole. <laughs> oh. It's been rough the last couple weeks. I'm telling you, just in case I knew this, I, I, I saw this one crashing and burning. So, got it back up. It's a preacher joke. You're a preacher joke. It's funny. A preacher wrote Bible Sunday morning seeing a farmer and a church minister, or a member of his church, at work harvesting. Brother, the minister lectured him, don't you know that the Creator made the world in six days and rested on, on the seventh? Yes, said the farmer, I know about that, but he got finished, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little better, okay. <laughs> Isn't God good? Get your Bible out, turn to Galatians. Chapter 6. We got another couple. We got this week and next week, and we'll be through with this. Amen. God is so good. I'm looking forward to what God's doing with us and for us and through us and to us. God is so awesome. Every time we turn around, God just keeps blessing and blessing and blessing. I can't tell you just how much He just keeps on going. God is just such an awesome God. And again, you cannot tell His, you cannot necessarily tell His faithfulness when you're in the fire. But when the fire cools down, you can look behind you. By the time, if you can ever go, and look behind you, you'll see, man, he was there all the time. He was taking care of business. I just didn't recognize him. Amen? Galatians chapter 6. Stand for the reading of the word. Galatians chapter 6. A very powerful, probably one of the most powerful scriptures there is next to John 3, 16 and Psalm 23. This is probably one of the most powerful scriptures there is. And it has a lot to do with saying with how we act with God and interact with God. How we interact with others. How we can interact with ourselves. This is such a very powerful, powerful scripture. So powerful that instead of doing it all at one time, uh, take it over a couple of weeks so we can take our time and go through all of it. Verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not locked. Why? We can stop right there. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. You say, well, I haven't mocked God. Well, we're going to talk about that and see. You might think a little different after we get through the lesson here today. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Wow. Your output determines your input. Did you know that? Y'all say that. Your output determines your input. Somebody said, look, somebody tell them that. Your output determines your input. Kind of different than, than, than what you think about. Normally, you know, uh, uh, that, that don't even sound right in the economy of the world, but in God's economy, my output determines my input. What I put out is what I'm going to get back. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't give up. For in due season, at a proper time, we shall reap if we faint not, if we don't quit. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them unto the household or the household of faith. Just put your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, you're a powerful God. You're a mighty God. We ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, Lord, to help us see, to know, to understand what your plan is for us, Lord, and to move forward, not backwards. Lord, not to be stuck in a standstill, or not to be going backwards, but to be going forward. We trust you right now, and we know, God, that you've got this day. It's in your hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the church, say it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. If you can't stand up, just stand up while I preach it. It'll be cool. Amen. The, the, the seven laws of the harvest. Matter of fact, when I get through, it's probably going to be eight laws. Amen. Uh, uh, in, in the actual sermon series. But it's called seven laws, but there will be a number eight. I can promise you. Okay, now, now just a couple. Just a couple. I do mean just a couple of slides. From last week's, for those that weren't here, you can get caught up. For those that were here and weren't listening, you can get caught up. <laughs> All right, that got a little more response than the jokes did. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. This is the year 2018. Of 2000 represents resurrection, 18 represents new life, 18 or 8 represents new beginnings. So this is, this is a very powerful year that we live in. This is a year probably, if we don't see the Lord come back, uh, that's, that's my favorite event that should be taking place. If it doesn't take place, something very powerful, special, will be taking place this year, I believe. But we're going to see something that we have not seen before. Amen. I believe this is the year. Amen. So, but, but in order for us to fully see what God has for us individually, even collectively, we've all got to do our parts. Now think about the three students. They were duck hunting, and and uh, Mo or, or Cur Larry, Larry and Curly both shot a hole in the boat, and and water's flying up. So Mo says, "Do something, do something." So Curly shot another hole in the boat. He says, "Why is it there for us? I'm letting the water out." Yeah. So do something, but at least do it right, okay? That's what this is all about. Learn it how to do it right. Uh, God set up a system of laws, and His laws are, are universal. They're simple. They're absolute. They're stable. Meaning that, that these laws apply to everybody. Have you ever seen somebody that think the law applied to them? Uh, I've been like that before. And the patrolman showed me different. I've been like that before, and the policeman showed me different. I mean, like before the teacher showed me different. Amen. So, so, so a lot of times we think the law won't apply to us, but these laws apply to us, to everybody. They're very simple. You don't have to have a theological degree to figure this stuff out. And it's absolute. If it works one time, it's going to work a hundred times. Amen. It's not like it works today and maybe not tomorrow. Or, or it's every time. We don't have to replace the batteries in it. We don't have to worry about if it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz. It works every time regardless of where we are at. And it's stable. It's not going to change. We can depend on it. Amen. So, 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 these laws, the, 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 none of them are more important in these laws. The law of gravity. We talk about the law of gravity and other kinds of laws that is absolute. It even happens out in outer space. You see, see all these laws taking place. But the greatest of these is the law of harvest. The law of harvest, you say, well, that's a spiritual thing. Well, yes, it's spiritual. But not only is it spiritual, it's physical. Remember I told you, I've known some people along the years that were very uh, prominent people in their businesses and prominent in the community that didn't necessarily go to church, didn't even serve God, but they believed in godly principles and they practiced the principles. And as they practiced the principles, because these are universal and because they are uh, stable and they're absolute, they practiced the principles and God always blessed the principles that they Practice. That's exactly why Jesus says uh, when he comes back, he would say, well, didn't we, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do things in your name? He said, get away from me. I never knew you. It's because principles in God's word work. They're good. You can stand on them. You know, uh, uh, all these other books you buy, this is a new and revised edition. We don't find any revised editions. All we find is different versions of what's already there. Amen? Because the Bible, look what I said about the words. Bible work. That's right. So that's why I say it's always work. Always work. Okay, so here, so here we're going to talk about the laws of the harvest. And as we're talking about laws of the harvest, again, this is this is the the, 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 the last couple from last week. And actually by this time last week we'd already gone through five slides, so we're going through, we're sliding on through now. Amen? <laughs> Just so you know what's going on. There's seven laws I'm going to talk about, three basic principles. And the first principle, remember this, that it stick in your head, that it stick to your gut, that it stick to your heart, that it stick to your mind, that it stick to everything you do, and it stick to your job, with your kids, with your wife. Harvest is always a consequence. You don't just stumble up and get a harvest. Harvest, if you, the harvest that you receive is always, somebody say always. 
It is always a consequence. You will always reap what you sow. It doesn't matter what it is you're sowing, you will reap it. It's going to happen. It will take care of itself. You don't have to wonder about it. So, so again, here we go. Watch this. Now, uh, uh, you only reap what you sow. And, and now, now let me just let me just kind of clarify that directly. You only reap what you sow. Amen. That, that, that's that's the first law. You reap what you sow. Watch this. That's directly. Indirectly, you reap from what others sow. The whole church can hurt from one person. The whole church can 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 rejoice because of one person or one act. The whole church or your whole family can have a good time and one person can cause it to come to a halt or stand still or one person can cause it to rejoice again. So again, uh, uh, directly, I reap what I sow. Indirectly, I reap what somebody else has sowed. But still, there's always something being sown and I'm always going to reap this. Amen? So again, this, this is the last one from last week. Sowing always involves seeds. I got, I got some, matter of fact, before I forget, I'll bring one up here with me now. Amen. I went farmer shopping last night. Amen. All right. Sowing always involves seeds. Seeds equal potential. Now, I'm glad I went and bought these seeds last night because I ate an apple yesterday. And uh, apart from the one I swallowed, there were six seeds in it. <laughs> there were six seeds in this apple. I took them and laid them out on the, on the by, by the coffee maker on the towel. I said, I said, I, I, I know you got a reason, and I, and I hate to ask, why are there apples? Why are, first of all, all these center apple seeds? And she says, why are they by the coffee maker? I said, they're my illustration for the service tomorrow. Don't let me forget it. So guess what? When I go home and make my coffee later on, I have six seeds sitting by there. Plus the one I swallowed, seven seeds in all. I'll be the only one in the house. You get, we get, we get the seed, pack of seeds, the six seeds to anybody else in the house. I have six seeds. You get them now, I have seven. All right. There we go. All right. So seed equals potential. Seeds always produce a harvest. And, of course, harvest is results. So, so you can't say, well, I, I didn't realize what I was doing, and I don't see it as seeds because I talked to my husband that way or I talked to my wife that way. I don't see it as a seed or because I did this in my business. I don't see it as a seed. I just see it as an action. Well, remember, those actions, what comes out of your mouth, your output, whether it's in your mouth or whether in your hands or whether what you do, your output determines your input. It's got a boomerang effect. What you do always comes back to you. Maybe not as soon as you might think, but it will always. Somebody can say always. always. It will always come back to you. So now let's go ahead and start with the next slide. That was the first law. You reap what you sow. And again, I told you my mama, every time I stepped out of the house, especially on date night, mama would say, son, just remember, she had a real hot, pitchy voice too. And she called me cricket. And she would say, you should say, well, mom was getting ready. Then she'd call out the doors, I'm going out. Cricket! Remember, if you did, you got to pay the fiddler. <laughs> that was an old possum trap way of saying, you're going to reap what you sow, son. That's right. Be careful. Amen? So, so here it is. Watch this. We reap the same kind as we sow. You can't continually be mean to somebody, expect them to love all over on you and to have a loving dovey attitude all over you and stop when you're always pushing them away and getting on them and, and telling them you don't love them, you don't care, blah, 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 blah. Don't expect them to always be there and be loving dovey on you unless God's got a hold of them and God's helping them because eventually you're going to get back what you're giving. You can't take your child and, and provoke it to wrath and provoke your child to wrath and provoke your child to wrath and expect your child to, to really respect you and to want to see what you got for them to have. Because again, your output determines your input. So, you know, I see people all the time and I say, you're looking good. They go, they go, you know, you, you always say I'm looking good. I say, well, you know what? The time I don't say it, you might want to go look in the mirror. <laughs> and so one time, well, somebody told me in church not long ago, you just always 
said, Man, I'm looking good. I said, The person with you? They said, Yes. I said to him, They said, No, I went, Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we go. See, this is the law. If you take your notes, write this down. This is very powerful. The law of reproduction, the seed always, y'all say always again, it's always, it's, it's absolute, it's positive, it's going to happen. The seed always surrenders to the law of reproduction. I'm not going to take time to read all of it, but the Bible talks about the grass and the seeds and the plants and the trees and the sea creatures and the birds and the land creatures. It says they're all going to produce, they're going to produce themselves over and over and over again. The bird does not produce a lion and the lion does not produce a bird. The lion may eat the bird and still he's not going to produce a bird. He's going to produce a lion after his kind, the trees after their kind. The law of reproduction is going to happen. Now, 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 then we're going to go back to us now. It's not just natural seeds. Because watch this scripture here. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, shall he also reap. One of those words for soweth, one of those words for soweth is actually saith. Wow. So whatsoever man saith, that shall he reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. So your words from your mouth, your actions, whatever you do, God is watching. He is not mocked. You can say, well, he don't mean it for me. You know, like I told you about my daddy, we were watching a John Wayne movie, and, and we didn't watch it 20 times. I said, Dad, I really got to go. He said, well, stand down and watch it right now. Right in the middle of this big fight with the Indians. I said, I know, Dad. We've seen it 20 times. John Wayne always wins. He said, but not this time. So that's a movie. They didn't rewrite the ending. That's it. He said, well, you never can tell when it's going to change. I said, no, the movie was already made. It's always going to end the same way. The same way. You can say, well, it don't count for me. I can be abusive to somebody. I can be verbally bad to somebody. I can be physically bad. I can, I can, can do something to somebody uh, 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 in any kind of way, uh, uh, not help them or whatever, and, and I don't have to worry about it because it don't count for me. Wrong. Everybody, it always, say always again, always. it always comes back to you. Now, this day and time, they call it karma. I won't go to what they say about karma, but I hear about karma a lot. And what I'm trying to say is, I just look at this much, I'm talking about karma, I'll say, yeah, what you read, you're going to sow. I mean, what you sow, you're going to read. So, so, so here it is. Well, I love this. You read what you sow, so make sure your seeds are good seeds. There's Garfield. I didn't think Garfield so good seeds. This that's the dog anyway. My red dog's name is Cody. Cody, what's the name? Cody. Cody. I was close. <laughs> Amen. So, so, so again, let's go ahead and go here. Ready? Ready? It says, whatsoever. Think about this now. Whatsoever. He didn't say just spiritually. Oh, he's talking about spiritual. No, everything. Whatsoever, whether it's a physical. Mental, emotional, whatever. God has placed a law in action and it will come back to you. Over the years, I've had uncles and over the years I've had workmates and over the years I've had other people that honestly I just could not seem to get along with them. They couldn't get along with their own shadow. And many times I would stay away from them and the Lord would speak to me inevitably or something would happen and inevitably I'd be stuck to them. And each time the Lord would say, now show him or show her or show them how I do things. I'm a him. And so I start loving on them. And I start being interested in what's going on in their life and start talking to them. And it was so amazing because as I would start doing this, before long I'll wind up befriending them and not just befriending them, they'd be great friends. And so, so I learned this a long time ago. Watch you sow, even in the roughest soil. You might not reap as much as you in the good soil, but still, it's going to come back. So then, that's what I said. So whatsoever. So remember, we're talking about the seed always surrenders to the law of reproduction, okay? And again, it's not just our natural seeds. Definitely. But think about this now. Again, I just talked about it. Our seeds are our attitudes and our actions. Anybody here ever had a bad attitude? 
Anybody here sitting beside a bad attitude? <laughs> That's right. Guys, you say no, never. Never. Y'all said it. Here's your chance to get some brownie points. Not me. You may be talking to somebody else. It ain't me. I got No, no, no. no I got my queen here. She, no, we ain't got a problem. No. All right. So now, now so, so your actions and your attitudes. Now watch this. So it involves you spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. You can sow seeds in all those areas. Think about this thing. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, along with natural seeds. Uh, the Bible talks about it. We're going to go through this right quick. Uh, uh, this, is such, this is such an awesome, awesome thing. Job 4 and 8 in the Amplified Version says, As I myself have seen those who plow iniquity and sow trouble, troublemakers, mischief, and show mischief, they're going to reap the same. Those that can't wait. You ever see somebody that can't wait to get in the middle of something? And you think they're trying to help you instead? They're trying to get some information so they can make it worse. They can spirit, it. They can spread it. Make it bad. You know, sometimes prayer requests wind up being a tattletale session. session. Oh, come on now. Y'all got to help me out here. I got quiet. <laughs> so now, so now watch this now. Very careful. Proverbs 11, 18, New American Standard. The wicked earns deceptive wages, but he that sows righteousness gets a true reward. Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is, we reap the same thing. I know that not only do we reap what we sow, or we reap our hearts because we sow, but whatever you sow, that's exactly what you're going to reap. That's law number two. Here comes uh, law number three. We reap more than we sow. Have you ever snapped at somebody and all of a sudden they come on you like a wild rabbit? Whatever. You're thinking, all I said was, Dad! And I unleashed the gates of hell! Guess what? You reap more than you sow. I can tell you this too, when it comes to a conversation between two people, especially a man and wife, especially a man and wife, but between two people, however the conversation or the confrontation starts, if it starts on the low note, it starts with loving, kindness, and appreciation, and it's in a way that's not uh, uh, accusing, then more than likely, you're going to find something happening in a good sense in that conversation, in that confrontation, it's going to wind up being productive. But if you start out right to start with, point your finger, and tell them how sorry they are and low down they are. They've already put up their walls and they're going to look over the wall just long enough to shoot something back. So it's important. Remember this. This is, this is, this is so awesome now. The seed always surrenders to the law of reproduction, but watch this. The seed always surrenders to the power of reproduction. We always, always I'll say all of We always reap more than we sow. It's not my word. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not making it up so it sounds like a good sermon. Whatever we do, we're going to reap more than we sow, good or bad. That's the cool thing. You know, the wicked servant, when he saw that he was going to be lost, he wasn't going to be able to, be able to handle stuff that his, man, that his boss had for him, that his master had. So he went back and, and started cutting the price of the people that owed money and started being a wise servant. servant. And, then, and now he's handling things. He's cutting in some slack so they would cut him some slack. And, and the master came and said, hey, man, this is some awesome stuff. Look at what you're doing. See, he realized in order to, to get, he was going to have to give. In order to reap, he was going to have to sow. In order to sow good stuff, he was going to have to or reap good stuff. He was going to have to sow good stuff. You can't walk around with a snotty attitude 24-7 and expect everybody to come love on you. You can't go to work and bark at your people and expect them to want to look. They'll, they'll, they'll work for you without fear. Always, whenever I work anywhere, and, 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 and I always wind up going about being a manager, and whenever I'm being a manager, my people, they always come to me, they come to me with anything, they weren't afraid to come with me, they weren't afraid to talk to me, because I told them, and when they messed up, I said, just come and tell me, we'll take care of it. If you tell me before you mess up, in case you are going to mess up, if you tell me that you're doing this, then when you do mess up, I can cover you, because I said, yeah, I told them to do it. So, so it's important with that relationship. So again, you always reap more than you 
so now this is this is this is cool right here. I'm like, I got some seats. Can I get let's see. Brandon, come here, buddy. And Doug, I'll get two the two youngest guys in here. <laughs> With his gray hair. If I wasn't even younger, I'd get DC. And hold your hand down. Y'all look on do it. Some of y'all are getting high with me. <laughs> They're good for your heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a heart food. <laughs>
Look at it these. Some of y'all got pumpkins. You can put a sign out saying, I'm raising lima beans. And put a sign lima beans. You can talk about it. Sign plant these lima beans. And talk to them. I said, talk to your plants. When it comes up, it's going to be pumpkins. You read what you sow. Watch this. Here it goes now. One kernel of corn. This is a scientific fact, man. We're not talking, no, I'm not joking. This is fine scientific fact. On average, each stalk produces three years. That's just on average, okay? Now, now, the average year of corn has 250 kernels. Remember, you're going to plant one piece of corn. You plant that one little whatever, and the vine's coming up. And you got all these peas, or you got uh, lima beans, or you got pumpkins. You got all this stuff coming up. One kernel of corn will produce one stalk. On average, that stalk will produce three ears. On each ear, there's 250 kernels. So, one single kernel of corn will yield a 750% increase. Wow. One kernel of corn, one seed will give us 750% of corn. Now, some of us even more than that. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a very high percentage of increase. Now, my question is, what you need? What is it in your life that's lacking? I'm not even going to look out there when I say this. Everybody say, he looked right at me, he's not for me. <laughs> How many of you ever said, nobody likes me? Everybody hates me. Every time I get around everybody, they get ill. I try to be good. I do just don't understand me. I'm high strung. Why is it? And no matter what I do, nobody helps me like they help that guy over there. You know, it reminds me of the three guys that were building a skyscraper. And they're up there, and every day they went to sit on the same I-beam up there, all how many stories high up in the air. And the guy said, ah, salami again. The next guy said, ah, bologna again. The next guy said, peanut butter again. The next day they go to eat, the guy says, oh, salami again. The other guy says, oh, bologna again. The other guy says, peanut butter again. He says, if I get another peanut butter sandwich, I'm going to jump. The next day, there was bologna, salami, and there was a peanut butter sandwich. He said, like he said, he jumped. They went to the funeral home a couple of days later, and they're talking to his wife. And, and they said, it's got to do with the I can't understand why he jumps. It's got to do with his lunch. He said, if you made him another peanut butter jelly sandwich, he was going to jump. She said, but that's why I don't understand. He makes his own lunch. <laughs> One seed. Why do you plant? What, what, what? How are you acting around, folks? How are you acting around other people? How are you, you know, when I'm at work at Fountain Fireworks, they put me over in your put me with the engineering, uh, sitting right over to the to the engineer, the vice president engineer, and he was from Connecticut. He talked with that Connecticut talk, and he, he was all, I mean, it's hard to even understand him. And he's talking, and I said, you got to wait a minute, i got to write this down. And so I write this down, and, and before I left, I was told, you got to act very professional when you're around these people, and you got to hold yourself prim and proper, because you're talking to the vice president engineer. I get in there, and I said, I went there and said, well, it's heavy, man. You're looking good. And I gave him a high five. I was sitting there and he goes, starts talking. I said, you got to hold on just a minute. I started writing stuff down. He said, what is going on? I said, you got to slow down. He said, why? I said, because you're talking northern and I'm listening southern. <laughs> and I said, I, by the time I said that, I said, oh, no. And somebody told me to be acting proper and proper. So I sat down and I said, there goes my job. I sat down, as I'm sitting down, he goes, you're hired. <laughs> and he was going to hire me as a process engineer. He said, but tomorrow when you come in, it's going to be a little different. I said, really? He said, really, just be here tomorrow. I came in tomorrow, and I already got a raise. And, and he, he, he said, you're not going to be a process engineer. You're going to be my, 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 uh, my, my uh, control manager for all the problems. 
I said, why? I said, because I believe you'll know how to talk to people. You see, again, put out. How you putting out? What do people get? What are the vibes they get from you? There's some people you get around. I mean, look, there's some people I said, come around the corner. I look at their eyes. I'm in Walmart. I said, come around the corner. I'll hide in the bees in the frozen section. Because <laughs> I can tell by looking at them. They're getting ready to tell me something I don't want to hear. They're going to tell me 15 times. And it's all going to be bad. You see, again, let me ask you a question. What do you need? Here it is. It's so simple. This is the simplest stuff. Simple. I can't say it anymore. So, so simple. We reap what we sow. So here, look, 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 look. Some of us, that's our life. All those dried up spots and all those, all those cracks. And some of us have got those nice little metals. I can already talk about that, but let me ask you a question. Where do you see yourself in that? You see the nice little meadows with the flowers, and you see the dry crack. Right. Sometimes God puts you there to teach you something. So it's not always what you've done. Sometimes it's what you're going to do, and God needs you to be ready for it. He puts you in those places. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just from you, what you reap. Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. The seed always surrenders to the law of reproduction. It also surrenders to the power of reproduction. Now watch this. This is powerful. It also surrenders to the path of reproduction. We always reap where we sow. Went outside one day and the man's looking for his keys. It's dark outside and he's looking for his keys. And I said, uh, what are you looking for? He says, keys. And I'm looking with him. I said, you sure over here? He says, no, my car's over there. I said, why are you looking over here? He said, life's better. <laughs> really? It's Say, say, listen, if you need something done in your marriage, don't, don't, don't be trying to sow in somebody else's marriage and get all in their mess. You better sow in your own marriage. If you, if you got a problem in your job and in your department, you better sow in your department and in your job. If you got a problem in your family, you better sow in your own family. And watch. I'm not saying to, to be a, a, a back away from everybody else. What I'm just saying is, I can't sow over there and expect to reap it over here. Okay? Watch this. This, this is powerful. If you want a better marriage, sow into your marriage. If you want a better work relationship, sow into your work relationship. If you want better personal relationships, then you just sow in those personal relationships. I can tell some people, you know, some people just have a, a they're fun to be around because they know how to have this kind of a sarcastic, joking way about them that you just love to be around them. And they'll say stuff and you go, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. That's fun. I'm not talking about those. But there's some folks that their whole life is bitter. And I'm not talking about because they're happy and have that little sarcasm. That's fine, but that's joking, that's carrying on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that's bitter and angry. And they're bitter and angry. And they're around everybody, and they're sarcastic about everything, and they're always harsh about everything. I've been around, I've been around some of those people, and when I get around them, I know I got to be around them. What I always do, I know because the, the negative in your mind takes up about six to seven more, uh, six hundred percent more space in your mind, a negative thought than a positive thought. So in order for a positive thought to even have any effect, you've got to sow at least seven positive thoughts to overcome that one negative thought, to even start to start on it. So, so if I come in, there's negative thoughts going on, and, and I'm human, I do mess up too, we all do. If you don't mess up, then you need to wear a cape, okay? And have a little hat set at Walmart with crystal ball and you know, whatever, but so, for the most part. If somebody comes to me and they're having, especially if they're having a bad day, but they come to me, <coughs> and I start putting positive, 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 positive. You're looking good, man. You know, you really do a good job with that. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, that's looking good, man. I, I really enjoy working with you. I, I remember, uh, some of y'all heard it. I remember one day I get, I, I get a call, come to engineering now. One of my people said, David, come now. Hank, who was a was a, was military and was a bodybuilder, was in there and he was huffing and puffing and mad and his big old arms were going, 
I said, tell him just to calm down. What's going on? He said, said, he done got to fight out in the assembly line. And he's getting ready to go back. He's going to tell him. He told me he could never come back to the assembly line. Blah, 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 blah. I said, calm down. Everybody take a deep breath. I'll be right there. So I go with the engineer and I said, tell him what's going on. He said, I was just talking to the girl, trying to find out my job was to talk to her to find out how to do this process. The, the head of the project manager or the plant manager come in and saw me talking to her and assumed that I was trying to trying to talk about other things, but I was talking about how do you make this work so I can write it down. I was documenting. And said he took it all out of context. He cussed me like a dog out there in front of all those people and told me to get out of assembly and went and told talked to, to the the plant to the to the COO and told the CO said said I want him out of here never to come back again. He said it's done. He says, I said, let me handle it. So I said, God, you got to help me. i got to be positive. you got to really help me. you really got to do something. And so on the way there, I'm praying all the way there. And I go down in the assembly, and I see the CEO, uh, the head man. As a matter of fact, at the time, he was called the vice president of manufacturing. He comes up, and I said, can I talk to you? He said, sure, Dave, watch this. He said, no, I need to talk to you, talk to you. He said, why well, I said, no, no, I mean like in private. He said, okay, let's go. So we go to the office down there and, 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 and we walk in. The first thing I did was I put my arm around his neck. He said, what's up, buddy? I said, I got to talk to you. I said, it's about a hanky. He said, I figured that's what it was. I said, hold on, hold on. He said, well, hanky went blah, 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 blah. I said, no, that's what they assumed he'd done. I said, but I'm going to tell you what he was doing as far as what he told me. And he goes, yeah, but I already told him to keep him out of here. He can't come back, blah, blah, blah. And I said, is that any way to be? We're all here trying to make Mr. Fountain look good. We're all here trying to make money so we can all put food in our mouth and roof over here. He said, you're right. I said, okay, all adults. He said, you're right. I said, well, look, man, do me a favor. Just, just call the dogs off. Let the man come back out here. If he has another problem, call me. I'll deal with it. He says, so you'll deal with it if it happens again. I said, I'll deal with it if it happens again. You let me handle it. He said, okay, you can get it back. I said, how about I go tell the plant manager? He says, you go tell him. I said, okay. So I said, where's he? He says, he's in that 38 up there. So I go to 38, and he's in, he moved all around with a clipboard telling people what to do. But this day, they had just barked him out. That's why he was so mad, because he just got ringed out. And he was inside of a bathroom. We call it the head. He's in the head, and a little bitty head, and he's working. He's sweating, and he's looking bad. He's looking rough. His hair's all rough. He don't like he normally looks. He's in there. It was like he'd been attacked by, by a pack of wolves. I walk up to him. I walk in there. I said, how you doing, Kevin? He says, ugh. I said, you had better days, ain't you? He said, yes. I said, I'm here to talk to you. He says, I know. About thank I said, yep. He said, well, I know what I told him. I said, well, I went to the bill. He said, I know you would. I said, uh, we're all just trying to make, make living here. We're just trying to help each other. He said, yes. I said, and Hanky wasn't trying to do any harm. He was doing what I sent him down here to do. He said, yeah. I said, well, how about doing me a favor? He says, what? I said, how about just, Bill said he can come back, but I just want your blessing. He said, well, Bill says he can come back. He said, I can go down there and put pointy fingers. You know, I could even have somebody fired. That won't solve anything. So, I just said, I want your blessing. I know Bill said he can come back, but I want your blessing. He said, well, okay. I said, then I told him this. I said, well, do me another favor. He said, what's that? I said, did you, Hanky said, you cussed him out. You cussed him like a dog. He said, well, I did get a little animated. I said, well, here's my thing. He said, well, I said, I said, next time you decide to cuss one of my employees, do me a favor. He said, well, I said, call me on the phone and cuss me. He said, I would never cuss you, David, in a million years. I said, that ain't what I said. When you've, when you've done it to one of my employees, you've done it to me. What did Jesus say? I said, so, so next time you want to cuss him, you call me up and cuss me. He said, well, I would never cuss if you heard what I asked you. He said, I got it. So I went on back to that work. I hadn't worked at Fountain in years. Kevin was working there in years. Kevin was working somewhere else. He was in Walmart one day. He was all the way across the store. And I heard somebody hollering, David! David Linton! Of course, I hear that all the time when I'm in Walmart. But it was him. He ran to me. And put his arms around me and cried. He says, Thank you for the way you handle things. Now, what did I do? I sewed for a specific thing. I 
sowed it, and I was patient as I sowed it, and I waited, and it, and it, and it came back. Amen? And it came back positive. So now, it's now I see Look, if you want a better spiritual life, then sow spiritual things. <laughs> you really can't just put God on the shelf and never look at His Word, never talk to Him, never sing to Him, never do anything to Him until you need Him. That's what happens to a lot of marriages. We, we, we just don't talk to each other anymore. We don't, we don't have anything to do with each, each other anymore until we have a problem. And then by the time we get together to help take out a problem, we're so disconnected that it's hard to... We've got to connect before we can work on the problem. It's hard to connect to work on the problem because we're still trying to connect. That's the problem in the sun. We've got a problem trying to connect while we've got a problem we're trying to fix. And it's impossible to connect and the problem of connection and the problem of fixing it at the same time. And so you have to you have to stay on top of that. So here it is. Watch this. And I'm going to whisper first. Somebody say amen. 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 We still got plenty of time to score to We still can beat the Baptist and McDonald's. Okay. Unless they're, uh, unless they're, they're what, what was the bad to meet once a month? They're the original bad water they meet once a month. You ain't going to beat them in the McDonald's. They're already there. They didn't have service today. Are you ready? Get ready. Remember, you read morning says, so what do you need? You need love. You need some joy. You need peace. You need some help. If you need love, joy, peace, help, relief. And sometimes we help, when we need help, it's physical. We need physical help. We need mental help. We need financial help. We need spiritual help. If you need any of these, your output determines your input. If you can't put it out, don't expect it to come to you. You can talk a good game. Maybe people all the time, well, I, well, I was going to do that. Well, going to do that is not doing it. Going to do that, good intentions. You've heard that in the Highway to Hell's paper, good intentions. I'm not talking about good intentions. If you need love, then you spread the love. If you need joy, then you spread the joy. If you need peace, you spread the peace. If you need help physically, mentally, uh, financially, spiritually, then you spread it. Here's my challenge to you, and I'm almost through. Ready? Quit placing blame and start planting seed. Quit placing blame and start planting seed. It's their fault I don't have any love. It's their fault I'm doing this. It's their fault, their fault, their fault, their fault. No, just plant. 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 If you can plant, it's amazing. It will come. We're going to finish this up next week. Here's what I want to ask you. I'll see you now. This is something. That's not my apple. It's an apple that looked that good. That seed was about that big, though, because I choked on it. Ready? <laughs> Did you know you can count the number of seeds in the apple? That's why I had them. I had six in the apple, six on the counter, and one in me. You can count the number of seeds in an apple. You can't count the number of apples in a seed. Wow. Let me say it one more time. You can count the number of seeds in an apple. You can't count the number of apples in a seed. The power of a seed. Remember I told you they found some in the pyramids? And they've been there for thousands of years and they planted them. And when they put them in the soil, when they were in the soil, they were in a bag, they were not moving. They didn't have any moisture, but as soon as they put them in the soil, they grew. A 3,000 year old seed grew once it was put in a position to grow. Some of y'all got some seeds in here that's not 3,000 years old, but you got some seeds in here that you've been holding back a long time. And if you plant them, it's amazing what will happen. You got relationships that really would be a whole lot better if you would be waiting for them to make the first step and you try. There's in here, you got jobs that your boss, you get a lot better if your boss if you learn to talk to them first instead of waiting for them to talk to you. And they're, they're, they're your children, whoever, it's just anything, name anything, anything. Because it's whatsoever. If you want to see a change, 
Now don't expect you to try it one time and it's going to work because that's what we're going to talk about next week. We're just getting started. This is the stuff the second week. Third week's going to talk about how long it takes for it to come back. On the back of all of these, on the back of all these seeds, it told me, and it was really cool. As I look, it said, plant five plants. These are the, these are the beans. They wanted to go in a container, plant five plants in a 12 inch container. Plant it six inches deep. And then wait for how, how many days I pour it off? How many days for it to come to harvest? This, plant them one inch deep, very, one inch deep, and put them six inches apart. And they'll come but I don't know how many days I got. Of course, I can't tore that off. But here it goes. Then it'll stand four to six inches apart, and the seedings are one to, one to two inches high. And then the crops will come out and some of it's still tore off that part. And again, it tells you how deep to plant it, when to plant it, and it tells you how long it's going to take before you see anything come to pass. You can't dig it, you can't plant a seed today and go, because you don't see it harvest tomorrow, go dig it up. And curse the seed. You plant the seed and leave it alone. It may come up the next day, it may come up the next month, it may come up the next year, but you gotta plant the seeds. Now, here's my question to you. DC, y'all and BJ, y'all get ready. Here's my question. When God tells us that we will reap what we sow, He's not punishing us. He's telling us how things really are. Wow. It's a law. It's a strong law that cannot be broken. Here it is. Here's my question you really ask me. Try it again. It's going to come up eventually. I've got to sow it and make way for it to come up. There you go. What are you sowing? 